Yo, yo, yo. You. Brooklyn Boys Radio. Back at it again. What's up, my G? Hey, what's good? What's good? Oh, you give me a left hand, man. Left hand for the white man. <laughs> That's how we start off today. <laughs> Left hand is for the white man. That's what we say. Brooklyn Boys Radio, <laughs> a.k.a. Dark Skin Dudes Incorporated. What's good? Whatever. He don't want to dress my shit, but uh, it's cool. You all right? You all right, man? <laughs> you all right? I'm looking at you, making sure you all right. I don't know. That's nah, what I'm I, wondering. I didn't have like. none of the weed. Uh, so what's good, does. brother? How was your week, man? Uh, my week was uh, eventful. It was good. I had a good time. Good time. Good. What about you? Good time doing what? Get out my business. You gotta be out my business. Be on my business. We talk. We, we always talk about. I wish. <laughs> we always talk about my business. Talk about some of your business, bro. I don't have business. I, I know. My business ain't nobody's business uh, hey, other I, than my business. Ah, uh, whatever. Here, here you go, t- hey, tough guy. This, why? Uh, why I got this tough mo? Yo, I'm starting to realize that tough mo. The world is uncomfortable with me being me. Yeah, okay, cool. I'm not uncomfortable with you. I'm just tired of hearing your bullshit. But that's a whole other story in itself. But check this out. Holidays are coming. Thanksgiving coming. Holidays are coming. What you gonna do for the holidays? Can we know that? What I'm gonna do? I know for the that's holidays. a little bit of your business, but I just wanna make sure that it's cool. I'm gonna be a man for the holidays, which means oh, make shit. sure that everyone's happy while no one makes sure that I'm happy. <laughs> that's what I'm gonna do for the holidays. Yo, this dude, right? I, I'm sorry you don't got I nobody. I speak the truth. I'm sorry you don't got nobody in your life to make nah, you happy, bro. It's not, like, that's not, listen, I'm happy. I'm happy, but <laughs> what you mean? Uh-huh. Is the hat? Monty says the hat. It's the hat. A prison hat. I'm no, a prison hat. I have a prison hat on every episode. <laughs> orange. Yeah, no, I get it. <laughs> it's like no. it's like orange is a new black. Listen, <laughs> listen, yeah. listen. I'm a I'm a father, bro. Not only am I a father, but I'm a black man in the world. I'm a yeah. Let's let's give it up for the dad. Especially for the holidays. Let's give it up for the dad. <laughs> so all I'm saying is, listen. We all know this. Matter of fact, we're all fathers, and we know this. When the holidays come, bro, listen. that's Christmas. I'm talking about Thanksgiving. You gonna cook for Thanksgiving? You go to family house? Like, what are you doing? No, nah, actually, Thanksgiving. Um, I cooked last year. What I did this year. Everybody survived. Uh, what I you did? You don't. Dig, I throw it down in the kitchen. No, you no, actually niggas. don't. Yes, you. you stop. Talk, don't well, try actually, to play. Me. What I, look, can I finish? Go ahead. What I did this year. Um, I actually hired Yanni. So I paid Yanni to cook me Thanksgiving dinner. And the only reason- I'm mad, Yanni could cook. You know, Yanni Pick up could, the Yanni. Yanni could cook her ass off. Shout out to Yanni. And the only reason being, if it was me and me alone, I wouldn't care about Thanksgiving dinner. You know, but you know, my daughter lives with me. I have to make sure that she has Thanksgiving dinner. Cause if her mom's was here, you know, she'd have yeah, Thanksgiving I, dinner. So. I don't know what I'm doing for Thanksgiving yet. Um, my daughter, she's, you know, she's traveling, working. Bye-bye. So she's gonna be out in um, Texas. So she's gonna go see my mother for Thanksgiving. So you can't cook for months? So, <laughs> anyway. Wow. <laughs> so, anyway. I was going to say some other shit, but that's not going to be. But, um, so I was thinking about taking a flight and just going to see moms and my brothers and stuff like that and just, and just do Thanksgiving with them. My daughter mother called me. Her, her sister called me, going to talk about, yo, we cooking at your house this shit. You know what I'm saying? So. I don't know if I'm staying home, so I'm gonna go, I'm gonna check with Bo and see what Bo gonna do if he gonna stay home. Bo is not body odor. Bo is his Whatever. little brother. Yeah, all right, cool. Shout out to Bo. Shout out Everybody. to Bo. That's my dude. <laughs> Listen, so if Bo stay home, I might stay home and cook. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. So I'm, I might stay home and cook, bro. Okay. I might stay home. Fuck you, man. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I can't even say okay. <laughs> Yo, this is crazy. <laughs> I might stay home. I might stay home and cook this year. Um, you have a young lady that's gonna uh, keep you company. I wish. While you're cooking. I wish. I wish. I ain't got no young ladies in my life right now. Currently. Hey, young ladies. <laughs> if you guys want somewhere to come eat Thanksgiving dinner, <laughs> holla at Styles. DM him at, at C Styles nine one one. He's Please. just as annoying as he seems on this show, <laughs> but you can deal with it. Oh man, listen. Nah, I got nobody to cook for this Thanksgiving, man. Hopefully, um, you know, hopefully that changes. Somebody might come back or somebody might be new. You see how the times have changed? Because usually you ask a man about Thanksgiving and he's like, yeah, you know, I'm going to go somewhere to eat. But nowadays, the men are the ones that are cooking. Cooking. Which there's nothing wrong with that. You know, I believe in gender roles, but at the same time, I also believe in a man being self-sufficient. No, no, definitely, man. And then, you know, the Christmas coming up, my daughter already gave me a list. I'm like, yo, you 22 years old. Why are you giving me a list of shit that you want? Be like, you 22, be like. You should be grateful. 
Actually, grateful for what? My daughter's birthday is November 28th, and I've been asking her for a list of what she wants for her birthday for the past three months, and she does this to me every I, single I year. I hear bro. you, but my daughter, 23, she told me she wanted a new phone. She, I don't remember. It was like three or four things she told me. I'm like, yo, listen, B, you might get two of those things. I'm not buying you a whole bunch of so shit. So how about this, this? It's either she asks you. Oh, she wants... Or she go ask another man. No, nah, you prefer? She ain't built like that. I'm, I'm that ain't just, gonna that ain't gonna happen. I don't even know okay. why would you even put that dumb shit in there. What the fuck? Oh my fuck? god. This dude is crazy. Bro. This nigga's belligerent. I'm just but anyway. All I'm saying is I'm sure you would rather her ask. N- you. Listen, she not asked me for that. And I'm not saying she's gonna go ask. Ask another nobody man. else for that. That's what I mean. But no. And I think she want me to take care of her card note this year uh, for, for for Christmas. I'm like, uh, I might do the I'm not gonna tell her Christmas now, but you know. That's what's happening with me for the holidays. Interesting. You know what I'm saying? I probably ain't gonna get no good gifts. I mean, you're a man. Why would you? Yeah, 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 probably. But you know, some I appreciate socks and drawers. I don't. I could buy them myself. I could order them straight off of Amazon. I could order them off of eBay, bro. I'm good. Nah, I love socks. Because I, I buy myself drawers and socks. Yeah, and but t-shirts I, I love. All the time. I just love. And that. then my undershirts, my white shirts, they're Banana Republic Lux Pro shirts, and they're forty dollars a pop. I have. Forty dollars. I'm not talking about forty dollars a pack. They're forty dollars each T-shirt, and I buy them ten at a time. And I'm not saying a woman wouldn't buy me that. I'm just I saying like the most people. Shirt. Most people when they're like, "Yo, you pay forty dollars a shirt for your undershirts," they're like, "You're crazy." I mean, but but and it, and I never it, had it, a has, and it has had... nothing to do with anything superficial. I just love. I love. I love the fabric. I love the way they yeah, feel. And I love the way they fit. Say, I've never had one. Um, my Target shirts are very good for me. <laughs> <laughs> or I go to. You know what I? You, Target, yeah, so we make it sound fancy. You know what I like, though? It's crazy, though. What's that shit called? Primart. I have no idea what that oh, is. Okay, cool. Primart is fire, B. What's they Primart? got everything in there for like 5 to $20. Every, I'm talking about every fucking thing. If you got Are a y'all kid... Y'all talking about Uniglo? No, it's called Primart, B. It, 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 was, it was out in the UK, and now they got it in here. You can't buy shit off there from online. You got to actually go in the store. I seen them making a big one, Where's the I store? think. It's in Kings Plaza. But they got one coming, I think, in Manhattan or somewhere. Primark, they got everything. They got suitcases. They got towels. They got, they got shit for your hair. They got, they got, yeah. But it's like on steroids. Like this shit is. If you're gonna go buy some shorts for the summertime, like the swimming, you can get a nice joint at Primark. It, like it does sound like a commercial. Nah, it's not a commercial. I'm just saying. Yo, listen. Go get your prime my clothes, B. Like I get my. That uh, sounds like. Yeah. A <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hear you. I. I, I get my shit at Prime Mart. It's five dollars, nigga. You get ten T-shirts. I think, so, I think somebody from Prime Mart reached out. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. Nah, they didn't even know I'm talking about this. Today. I'm just saying, man. I get my shit from there. Oh, but my drawers gotta be polo drawers. I, I, wear polo I am. I am the biggest underwear snob in the world. I got more underwear like than anybody drawers, I know, though. Nah, nah I don't know. I'm underwear my drawers be everything. Underwear sh- and, 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 my and drawers, sheets, nobody beat My me. drawers be everything from Calvin Klein to MCM to Ralph Lauren to oh, nah, Tom I got Ford no I got one to Gucci style of drawers. Yeah. To, to, like, I'm, Black I'm, polo that, drawers. And that's, that's it. it. That's the thing with me. Like Socks and drawers, I'm a snob. Yeah, I got mad socks, too. I'm a snob. I got a lot of socks. And the crazy thing. I actually knew a new sock drawer. Look at you. Yeah, I, I can't even fit socks in my drawer anymore. Oh, yeah, oh, Yo, but I, underwear, socks, and sheets, nobody can fuck with me on blankets. I got too many blankets. I had to throw away blankets Yo, last year. You know what's my new fixation? What's that? I'm not going to lie. And I have to give credit to this young lady who, um, who had started redesigning my apartment over because she bought me a set of white sheets, bro. I'm not blushing. Oh, y'all look crazy. Yo. No, but anyway, she, huh? I mean, about to get the thread count? No, I mean, I've always been about the thread count. 1800 thread count, Egyptian cotton, all of that. But she bought me white sheets. I've never really bought white sheets. Really? No, I've never really bought white sheets. I got white sheets. White sheets. I've, had, I've had a couple of pairs of white sheets, but now, like, bro, all I want is white sheets on my bed. Um, it's just something about white sheets. Like, I just sleep more comfortable on white sheets. Maybe it's a thing. But I, I want to talk about white shit, but not white sheets. White you know what I want to talk about? White rags. Okay. That shit will oh, tell you the, the truth, truth, the the truth, truth about your dusty ass, B. <laughs> that shit is the truth teller about what your balls look like, B. You know what I'm saying? A chick come to your house and you want to know what she about? Give her a white, a white rag, rag and a white towel. My nigga, I'm telling you. 
She better wipe her ass with her sock. <laughs> <laughs> you said she better wipe her ass with her sock. Yo, don't get a white rag, right? And put that shit on your nuts and shit. And you in a chick crib. If you can't <laughs> that shit out, yeah. put it in your pocket. But you know, but you know. <laughs> don't give her back that rag. But you know what, but you know what's the counter to that? Like with me, my rag, I keep an exfoliating rag. I'm in talking my about tub, when you, I, yeah, right? I got a exfoliating yeah, yeah. I keep an exfoliating rag for one. That's the only thing I wash my body with. And for two, I got the gloves. I keep, I keep I do too. I got yeah, the exfoliating gloves. gloves. Yeah, I and I use gloves. and I use the coconut hibiscus um scrub. Yeah, okay, right? Yeah. And I scrub like every two days. I use, I use Yo, the Dr. Brennan's. Listen. The Brennan, the, 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 <laughs> I use no, the Dr. Listen. Brennan's. Nah, listen, bro. Listen. Oh, oh, coconut oh, hibiscus. <laughs> get it right. Yo, listen, all I'm saying to you, that white rag will tell you the truth about your body. Yo, yeah, it'll, humble, lady, it'll humble, humble most people. Ladies, go home. I want you to take the white rag and lift up your titty, right? <laughs> Just go. <laughs> and go across the titty. If that shit come back up pretty, you got to clean under your titty. <laughs> it's crazy. No, I'm serious, though. But it's just, like, it's just like if you got a man who has no pairs of white drawers, something ain't Oh, that's right. me. I don't really own white drawers. Oh, but man. that's not why, though. I just, I used to like, I like black tank tops. So the reason why I start wearing black tank tops because they show better under shirts, like white shirts and stuff like that. You don't see it really. Mm -hmm. So then I'm a matchy guy, even with my underclothes. You're a matchy guy. Yeah, I like to, I like my shit to match. No, I know, but matchy is not a word. <laughs> I made the shit up, man. We make shit up in the hood all the time. Are you serious? Is this not hip hop? Is this yeah, not hip hop? Yeah, yeah. Is this not slang? Yeah. So that's why I like. Is this black, not that's ebonics? why I got a lot of black underwear. But I never had no 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 uh. No, what they call that skid marks and shit like that. When I, I still got white underwear in the crib, but that's even not, when you were younger, you know, even when you were younger, you never had. Nah, I had some skid marks. <laughs> when I was younger. Yeah, yeah. Nah, I I, we listen when we were younger, we all had skid marks. Especially, especially when your ass start itching <laughs> and you Yo, itch your ass. We gotta listen. Don't we gotta keep it a buck. Don't itch your ass. But now, baby. now as a grown man, bro, oh, no, you shouldn't if have you, that. There's no reason you should have you should, skid marks. You should, you should, you should, you should keep baby wipes in the bathroom. Oh my god, you bringing up all this crazy shit? Can I tell you something about some wipe shit? White towels, white rags. I, just, just FYI, if your shit dirty, just throw it in the garbage. Don't even give. Don't ladies, don't give back the nigga his shit. Like you know what I'm saying? You can't wash the shit out. But yo, why I went out to eat a uh, couple, couple, couple weeks ago and shit, and I had some. Um, you know, Styles is a dating connoisseur. <laughs> Oh my God! But what restaurant? I what had, restaurant were y'all? Nah, at? I was out of town. Okay. So um, I had some lamb chops. Right. So I ordered lamb chops. Ah. I love lamb. I love lamb <laughs> lollipops. Like I love it, especially y'all places. Y'all gotta bring back the mint jelly, b. That's what go with lamb chops. A lot of places don't be have the the, the green mint jelly. You know, I never liked that mint jelly. I love the mint jelly. You ever tried it with lamb chops? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I love it. I love it. But check this shit out. So. I got the lamb chops, right? And I'm busting them down and I'm starving because I, I ain't eat all day. So I ain't even care. I told Shasha to show you, listen, I got to pick up the bone and like eat that shit. Like I can't just cut it off and shit. Eat it like a Haitian. Yeah. The, yeah. The, the, the eat it like a Haitian. Haitians eat bones. <laughs> listen, so I'm busting the shit down. But she's enjoy she enjoying me watching me eat because I ain't eat all day, right? So Shorty that's goes. What, that's what she told you? That's what she told me. Right? So she goes. I got the napkin, but the napkin kind of, you know what I'm saying? The napkin I got, he keep giving me the napkins, but they got the cheap napkins, you know what I'm saying? And I'll, sometimes I don't like to use, you know, the uh, the towel that the spoons and shit come into, because I'll be unsure what they, um, you know, if they clean them properly uh -huh. and shit. So <clears throat> she said, oh, let me give you a wipe. So she goes in her bag. I said, oh, good looking. A so moist towelette? Yeah, yes. So I take the towelette and I, and I wipe my hand and I take it and wipe my face. So I'm sitting there, I'm talking to Shorty, I'm going... You're talking about the ones that come in the little... Little pack, the yeah, package. Little, yeah. Okay. And, and I'm right here because my, my mouth has some, like, you know, some... some lamb, lamb chop lamb, juice. Lamb chop juice on my shit. So I'm taking... Baby juice. Listen, listen. I'm taking this shit and I'm wiping it. I'm going... Bah! Look, look, I'm going to keep going like this, right? And my shit kind of nummy, kind of, like, but tastes kind of... Another Ebonics word, nummy. Yeah, nummy, kind of tangy. And, I, and I'm not sure what's happening here, right? So she kind of looking at me, and I'm looking at her like. You looking your lips? Now I'm like, yo, shorty, what kind of wipe is this? And she looked in her bag, and she gave me her vagina wipe. <laughs> I'm like, yo, I'm like, yo. So, so you, you, so you indirectly ate the vagina over dinner. 
Well, I didn't eat her vagina. It was a fuck. How's indirectly? It, it, it wasn't her vagina. vagina. Right. In theory. Oh my in, God, in this theory. guy's fucking crazy. In theory. But yo, I'm sitting there. My mouth was like, nobody, if, ladies, nobody want to eat that coochie like that, diva, with that taste, diva. Like that shit is crazy. It smelled good, but the taste was off, man. Was was, I mean, what does it taste like? I don't know. It's like bitter, man. Mm. I don't want bitter box, man. Sounds like cocaína. <laughs> I don't. I don't I don't want bit of box, B. Like, I don't want the bit of box, but my yeah, face smelled good. Okay. Yeah. I mean, my face smelled go. good. That's, I guess that's the plus part. Good smelling numb face. There and, you go. Uh, yeah, numb I guess me. So. Guess she was trying to get me numb, right? Sit on it for a couple of, nah, let me stop. Let me fuck out of here. <laughs> so what's good, man? What's good? What's good is I just saw this video. As a matter of fact, I want y'all to check out this video of Kodak Black with this young lady. Oh shit. Check this out real quick. You didn't offer me to go get nothing to eat, nothing. We've been, I've been traveling for seven hours. First of all, no real nigga is not finna not get no bitch nothing to eat. I told and you, you it's I'm barbecue. Not gonna give up no pussy it's, for no flight. It's barbecue in there. No, I'm not eating no fucking leftover barbecue from yesterday. After you probably had a bitch over here already. No, that's not how you properly do this. Yeah, I, I, I got you on a properly flight. I don't give with a, a properly fuck. driver. All niggas want to book me a flight. Okay. So like, what? All cares? bitches want to drop that neck. I don't mention that though. Okay, why don't you fucking fly them out then? The fuck? That's that's so exactly what I'm gonna do. I should have told your poor ass that on the on the phone before you Watch came. Your yeah, I should have told your broke ass. Interesting. Yeah, that, that's funny. Yeah, it was that's fun, it's funny and sad at the same time. But I enjoyed it because I just thought it was. I talk about this all the time, bro. So, so let's 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 go over that. I mean, what what is the protocol, right, on both sides? What is the protocol for a woman on a man flying you out, and what is the protocol for a man on flying a woman out? So I tell women all the time, don't ever go no place with a dude. If y'all haven't established, if y'all being intimate, sexual. Ground you know, rules. Yeah. Because a dude, when he's flying you out, he feel like he's getting some, right? Even if you told him he not getting some in his head, he's thinking that's what he's getting. Gotcha, bitch. You know what I mean? And I tell the men, don't fly a woman out if you haven't established or already been getting some. Cause you set yourself up for a bad trip, you know what I'm saying? Say potentially bad trip. And I see, I had a, I, I got a friend this happened to. She was just flown out, but they went on like a weekend getaway, you know what I'm saying? And they went on a weekend getaway. Dude took a, dude took her somewhere, and um, they got back in the room. They hung out all that day doing the activity they went, where they went there to go do, you know what I'm saying? Then homeboy took in the room. She didn't want to give up the box. So he put her out the room. She called her friend crying and talking about she can't get no money. She ain't got no money to get home or she don't know how to get home. You may right? be broke. Mm -hmm. Dude then went outside the room, found another shorty with some chicks, brought her back to the room, knocked her off. It didn't care about her. She had to figure out her way to get back home. Now, was that insensitive of him? No. Uh, I, I feel like it was insensitive. I think, I think it was insensitive. But at the same time, <clears throat> I also feel like Shorty, why would you even go on a trip? For one, with no bread, How and two, you? not establish what is gonna happen on this trip. How and if, you, if he, even if he told you it was cool, now nah, we not gonna do nothing. We cool. I wouldn't even trust him. Now, I look at it two ways, man. I think the issue was that sex these days has become very transactional, right? And I think it's on it's on both parts, right? It's on one part, a man is like, yo, I spent money, so you got to give me some ass or you got to commit to some type of physical act. But in the same breath, the same women that complain when men think this way are the same ones that are like, this nigga wanted some ass. He ain't even spend on me. You get where I'm coming from? That's a, that's a good and, point. And, and I remember, and, and look, this, I don't know if this is the way of the world now still or if it's ever going to get back to there. I remember when sleeping with a woman was dependent on how much she liked you, how much chemistry y'all had. And it seems like yeah, these yeah. days, and look, you know what's so crazy? Um, there was a young lady in my past that I messed with, and, you know, she was, she was out there, right? Story times with most. Nah, it's not even a story time, but she was out there, you know, she was one of those females that was in the videos and all of this. And um, 
Like, she really liked me. And you know why I respect her? I respect her because she kept it a buck with me. She kept it a hundred with me. Mm. And one day, she hit me and she was like, yo, Mo, I ain't gonna lie to you. Like, I love you. Like, I love you to death. But she was like, but babe, you know why I can't be with you? She said, I can't be with you because until I'm really your woman, you're not gonna take care of me. And she was like, Mo, I don't pay my bills. Mm. Yeah, so she's like, I don't pay none of my bills. Mm-hmm. You know, and I and I respect her just for keeping it a hundred with me. And I was like, you know, you're absolutely right. Like I'm not doing I'm not doing that. Like if you're my woman, then I fine. Yeah, we gotta work our way there. But I'm not the dude that I don't feel like I gotta finance you for you to be into me or whatever, whatever. But in the same breath, like I said, it's a catch twenty two. Because a female like that, like you have certain expectations from a man. So on the other hand, I guess that man has certain expectations too, you know. Mm. Um, so if he flies her out, I mean, this is my question. It's like it's like a gray area. Is he wrong for expecting her to be intimate with him? If <laughs> if, if, if if they don't set the ground rules, I th- I also do believe that the responsibility is on him to make sure that those ground rules are set. Before she leaves the ground and gets into the air, bro. Maybe he thought that she knew what the ground rule was. You I, can't. I don't know. Yeah, but you can't. You, but they was arguing about food, though. But they, he was like, yo, go eat the. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, it, it, she, the it, open the, in, the, in the fridge. My thing, I I think it's funny what he did. I don't think it's right what he did. I just thought that how it played out was funny. Um, cause you're right, right? That's his response. She's his responsibility. She's his responsibility. Right? Until, cause I tell women that all the time. Look, man, when you hang around me, you're going to get back home safe the same way you got here. So when you get through your door, that's when you trip and, and we could never speak. Don't, we could never speak again. Yeah, after yeah, that. yeah. Don't trip and fall while you with me. Trip and fall when you go back to your house. Don't trip and fall here. So I get that. But at the same time, this is what I will say. Her arguing back and forth with the with homeboy about getting her food, me as a dude, if I had the roles were reversed and a woman was treating me less than kind and told me, oh, you didn't buy me something, so I'm not feeding you, I'm at her house. I'm out. Adios. I'm out. Then, oh, I'm calling Uber Eats. Oh, I don't need you to do nothing for me. But my, but, but my question is also this, like his whole thing about Yo, you could eat the, 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 the barbecue that's in the fridge, right? You and I both know that there's people that don't eat from other people's houses. That's number one, right? We have no idea what this chicken even looked like in that fridge. No, 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 I get you. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? I'm not saying? even suggesting so, that she should have so, ate the chicken. So, so to me, it would have been easier for me to really make a decision or, or, or formulate an opinion about the situation if it was... He took her to Popeyes or he took her to McDonald's and she's like, no, I want you to take me to a better restaurant, right? But it's pretty much food that was sitting in the fridge. Like oh, no, nah, I don't suggest, I'm just, I just don't know why she was arguing for a nigga to feed her. You may be I think she was. I think she was arguing because to an extent, you may have flown me out, but... I still with the driver. He said, I, that nigga "Okay," stupid. and he had the driver. But <laughs> I think nigga, but, I just thought it was fun because he talked. This is to me, this is that? still my time, and I still traveled all the way over here to see you. Like, where's the courtesy? Where's the consideration? Listen, I hear you because bro. We, I, we we spoke about that. Last, I hear you. We spoke about that last episode about the requirements of dating, and one of those requirements was consideration, bro. And yeah, if that and person, so, but he, he felt like he didn't get the consideration back. Where's the consideration? The I ain't get no head. He ain't get no head. Right? That's what he felt like. She felt like she got the flight, right? She got to go see quote unquote quote that black, right? She got to go see them, be with him in his crib. She got the experience. She, I bet she, she was on Instagram in that car when she got the driver. Girl, look what I'm doing, right? She probably on a plane. Yep, I'm going. To, I'm going to wherever he at. Like you know what I'm saying? Yeah, she, yeah, yeah, yeah. she Instagramming it up and doing her thing too at the same time. So you got the full experience. I'm not telling you that's, that warrants some ass, but I'm just saying to you, what you thought was going to happen. But regardless, and we, once again, we had this conversation last episode, bro. I'm not going to put myself in a situation that's going to force me to be any less of a man. Uh, so uh, even, I, if I she, feel like a woman she should wants, never put herself she, in that situation I to agree. make her any less than a woman. I agree. And I, I, be, I, if, and I agree if, with you if, too. If she wants to act the fool, then send her home. No, 100%. Send, yo, so all right, you know, know what, Shorty? You, you, you going to the airport right, right now. now. Like, get out, out of here. Yeah, 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 you yeah, understand? 100%. But 
I'm not but a chick will still not, have a problem. I'm not, I didn't want to give him no ass, and he going to set me up. Which is fine. Yeah, cool, which yeah. is fine. But at the end of the day, bro, I fulfilled my commitment, which is making sure that your ass you got home. back home safe. You yeah. understand? I'm not going to get so caught up in my feelings <laughs> and so upset over the fact that you don't want to be intimate with me that I'm going to, you know, like, like, like I always say, you don't stop being a man just because you upset, bro. No, I hear you. But you also got to be a lady. I think it's I accountability agree. on both sides. Account- of course. I would have never, I would have never been in that position as a woman. I would have never make no dude have me in that. I got so my what own position back. would you be in if you were a woman? No, <laughs> I'm just saying. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. That that was a good one. That was that was a good one. I, I, that was a good one. You a bitch ass nigga. That's a good one. So let me ask you a question though. So somebody had asked me earlier. I guess it could tap into this, right? Is it wrong? For a woman to want a man for his money, and is it wrong for a man, is it the same, not wrong, is it the same for a woman to want a man for his money, and as a, as a man want a woman for her face? Okay, now for her face. Meaning how she look. You mean, I, uh, you mean a Bonix face? No. Oh, oh, okay. You mean her, her physical, her physical. I think, right, I think, that, I think that, 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 that question is like multi-tiered, right? Me too. I, I, I hope you get it the same way as Tico was here earlier. Tico! Yo. Tico, what up? <laughs> Yo, no, and the reason I say that, right? A lot of times you have men who are down on their luck. You may be broke. Right? And it's like they have a woman that they're interested in and she's not interested. She's not trying to hear him. She don't want no dates with him, blah, blah, blah. Now he starts doing better, right? He climbs up the ladder. Now his life is in place. And now she's giving him attention, right? Mm-hmm. And now he's like, yo, I ain't fucking with her because, you know, when I ain't have it, she, she wasn't won't. interested mm-hmm. and now it's all about the money. But something that I came to realize is there is nothing sexier to a woman than ambition. There is nothing sexier to a woman than a man with drive. There's nothing sexier to a woman than a man that's accomplished. So sometimes, or, or, or a man that could provide. Or a, a man that could provide mm-hmm. as well. But what I'm saying is, sometimes when we're down on our luck, bro, we carry ourselves with less confidence, right? Um, we carry ourselves differently than when everything's going right for us, right? Now we got all the confidence in the world. We walk into the room with our held head high, our head, our heads held high, our chest out. You understand what I'm saying? Um, and that's more attractive. No, but that's not the question I'm asking. You. Okay. If a chick, if a nigga. A chick go to do and she feel like your homeboy got the bag. Girl, so, yo, he got the bag, baby. Yo, he got it. Is that a, is that okay to deal with? Is it the same as a I think man it's the saying? Exact same. I think it's the exact same. I think I think in that situation, both of them are using each other for something. See, right? I, I, I disagree. So so so, so that woman. How she use? How's the man using her for her face? For her body. Nah, that is, it's, it's, we talking about face. Even if the, a, the attraction to the face is because, let's be honest, you see the woman across the room mm-hmm. and she has a pretty face, that just means you think she's fuckable, bro. You, that that's just means true. you want to fuck her. That's not true. That's bro, not true. If you're attracted, nah, that's not if true. you're attracted to a that's woman, not that true. means you want to fuck her. Listen, you're, that's you're not, not attracted true. to a no, woman. No, 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 no. I just want to sit with her in the park. And no, keep no, no, her no. That don't mean, it could be a number of things. It could mean you want to get to know her. It could mean that you want to make her your wife. People see people look like, damn, that's going to be my wife. Styles, no, people say 20, 20, 30 years ago. Yo, listen, yes. Listen. These days. So what I'm saying no. to you, attraction, attraction is. Hold Me up. and you speak every day. Yes. I have yet to hear you go, Mo, shorty bad, I want her oh, to be my wife. No, no but you, 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 you heard me say, you have heard me say, <laughs> no. yo, shorty could be my girl. You no. heard me say that before. When? After you got to know her. After, no. after you done. No. But I got to be attracted to her <laughs> physically for me to know her. I, no, 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 no sex first. I'm not, that's not what we're talking about. I'm saying to you is that's two different things. If you want somebody for their bread, that's not because of them. You want so if they didn't have the bread, the you wouldn't fuck with them. I think the difference is attraction. I, I think, I think the ahead. difference is one costs a man tangibly, financially. Mm-hmm. There's something that he actually loses. Okay. The other, the woman doesn't lose anything tangible. It doesn't really cost her. And I mean, and don't get me wrong. Allowing a man access to your body costs your soul, but tangibly it doesn't cost you anything when you're attracted to a man because of his money and he's spending money on you he's actually losing something tangible i think that's the difference but but in the end in reality losing your soul 
When you soul tie, that's two souls coming together. It's not one. So let's, let's make that clear. So you're telling me that each woman you sleep with, you soul tie with. I understand, but you're telling me that each woman. So you're you're basically saying that each woman you sleep with, um, there, it it causes you to be attached to them. It can be. Not, I men, didn't say can't. Does men, it? Men, men, men are, does it? Men are different. So, we're wired we're, we're differently. Di we, di we wired Some differently. Men. We're wired differently, but we still take on the energy of that no, other person. No, I, I agree. So we soul tie. I agree. You know, but, we, it just but, it just attacks us differently. But, what I'm just saying to you, money and being attracted to somebody because of their physical being is two different things. I don't think it's wrong if a woman goes, yo, yo he's handsome. Oh, yo, I love his body. She attracted I mean, I think that. that's what we would all hope and, and, for. And that's what we would hope for. Me wanting a woman because she got a dope house. There's a difference. There's, see now, now you have to clarify. Like, I, I can't. You have to. Clar you have to clarify that question. Go ahead. Because there's the seeing the woman across the room, and I'm attracted to her, right? And being attracted is not just the physical. It's like, wow, I'm curious about this woman. I'd like to get to know her. Then you also know that it's very realistic that there's the seeing the woman from and across the room no, and no. saying, I want to fuck her. No, it, so, it so you got to clarify which one it is because it all doesn't fall under the same category. Yeah, but attraction mm -hmm. and wanting somebody for something tangible is two different things to me. That's like me going, if, a, if a, I hate niggas that, that, that be around women and be like, yo, well, she got a dope crib. You trying to move in? Like, yeah, yeah. That's why you want her, because you, you got a dope crib? But, you, like, can't, but you, like, can't, you can't say it's something different, because if it was anything different, men wouldn't be putting up all of this money and jumping through hoops of fire just to get into a woman's pants. Obviously, guess what? it has because, a value as well. Guess what? No. That's because the woman made it a value. She sold it. That now they now they selling it. Sometimes not every woman. I'm just saying. Now you just said you saw the, the list we put out last week. Mm -hmm. Everything he had to buy mm -hmm. to even get to it. Everything so, was financial. So the requirements are different. You know what I'm saying? To you. So you know what I mean. I, yeah, I guess it's a great debate, man. One day we got to get a lady on the show that can sit right here. Yes, we do. Listen, if if there's any women that watch this show um, who are interested, you know. Shoot, shoot Styles a DM. <laughs> At C Styles now. Why, why they got to shoot me a DM? Because, because I, don't, I, don't, I don't like to be bothered with shit like oh, that. Oh, shit. This so shoot Styles shoot Tico a DM. Shoot Tico a DM. Shoot Styles. Tico! <laughs> or shoot Tico a DM. It's all good. But if you shoot Styles a DM, he may try to convert it into something totally different. Wow, why would you say that, man? Like, this guy always <laughs> made me sound like the perv. Like, why this guy always trying to make me sound crazy? I'm not trying. Listen. I'm going to start bringing his secrets out here, man. secrets? Yo, all right, cool. What secrets? I ain't got no secrets. Right, all right, whatever, nigga. But what did I say? Did I say I'm a converted? I said there's a chance. It, but so, guess what? So if I'm attracted, I might. I, I thank you. Is there a chance? But guess what? He might too. I might. No, I won't. Okay. I would describe it with you. <laughs> I'm about to describe it. Yo, Stop. I don't use things for evil. You know that. Uh, whatever. You just use it for your greater good. <laughs> this guy's crazy. Oh, uh, shit. So, look, I was seeing reports this week that uh, Jigga Man and Mr. Jeff Bezos uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> is reportedly uh, into uh, trying to buy the Washington Commanders NFL team together. Which I thought was, uh, I don't know, a little bit ironic, I guess, because of the times that we're in right now with the what whole. What times are you speaking of? With the whole Kyrie and, you know, Jeff Bezos owning. What's going on with Kyrie and oh, Jeff Bezos? Oh, come on, this guy right here, B. He, nothing's going on him with Jeff Bezos, but, you know, Jeff Bezos owning uh, Amazon, okay. which the book and the, uh, the link that Kyrie had. Uh, the documentary. Put it on. From Hebrews to Negroes. Yes. That everyone's in an uproar about. Yes. It's just crazy, you know. I don't know if Jigga Man gonna say something about it, or you know, he'll come out. You know, maybe Jay Z always come out six months later, and you hear something in the <laughs> drop something in the rap. Hopefully, he'll say something about it, or come out and say something about it. But um, yeah. But it was just ironic. All this stuff is happening at the same time. Um, also, I saw that uh, um, I was watching the owner, uh, I guess the CEO of Nike had came out mm -hmm. and said that they might not do business with Kyrie anymore. Which I'm highly disappointed of, if that's the case. Um, you know, last week when we spoke, you know, we, I, I honestly felt like Kyrie should have had apologized for the statement he made. I right? disagree. Um, and I felt that way because he had said that, you know, he know he has he made offend some people. Um, and if you know you offend somebody um, and you made offend some people and you made a mistake and put something out there, 
then you say sorry. I look at it like a car accident. You may have not meant to hit nobody with the car, but when you get out your car, yo, yo, my bad, it was my fault. I, you know, I didn't see the light change. And you move on, you have a conversation. But the things that followed after that, I highly disagree with, right? I highly disagree with the whole Nike decision um, a lot because, you know, one thing this conversation is doing for me a lot is it's opening my eyes and conversations are starting to happen. You know, I walked in the store the other day, it was like literally about 10, 10 to, between 10 and 12 people from different walks of life, black people, nurses, it was a bus driver there, young kid there, and they all starting to talk. I've never seen this happen in the store, just walking in a, uh, a store and everybody's talking about the situation. So hopefully in that people are starting to wake up with certain things. And so I, I love that the conversation is starting to happen and hopefully a leader will come about from it and some more things will come about from it going forward. Um, and this is a, a start to something. But at the same time, it's opened my eyes up to like a company, even as Nike which is, or Dita or whatever big company. And when I think about it, you say, yo, I'm not gonna have Kyrie anymore, right? We don't know what we're doing. When these companies are really run off of black athletes and black rappers and shit like that, like it's bugged the fuck out. Like, mm -hmm. and I mean, when I mean run by it, our culture really makes those brands hot and makes them millions and we, millions of we, dollars. We are the engine that churns out their profits. Product. So <laughs> most of the hot sneakers are athlete sneakers, right? Most of them are black athletes. And no disrespect to any white athlete. If anybody could tell me a white athlete that had a sneaker that everybody went to go buy. The only sneakers I could think of, and that was years ago, was the Andre Agassiz, like the Agassiz, yeah, when, so, when Nike had those. Yeah, so for mm. me, that like it's just bugged out, even with Adidas, right? Like, and the sneakers that you don't- What sneakers Adidas ever had? <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm saying with the, the shell toes, toes, the run DMC joints, yeah, this so is what I'm saying. saying. So this is what I'm getting to. So then, um, you know, even Stan if you take- Smith, Stan Smith Adidas. <laughs> if, you, if you had took, um, even the off-whites sneak, like the off-whites sneakers, you take those, you know, these the rap kids that make they make them hot. The kids in the street make these hot. They buy the, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, to me, for you to go, yo, I'm just not doing this, and we kind of work in tangent, even though you go on the shit, but we work in a tangent because you work need together. us. We, you need us to kind of make these things hot. It's, like, a, it's a mutually beneficial relationship, relationship. But see, but this right here. This, this should prove the point. When you have a business, you have Adidas, right? And, and we had this conversation, episode three, mm -hmm. about the nature of business. The nature of business is to make money, mm. period, right? The bottom line. That is the nature. That is what's important. That is the purpose. When you have a business that's willing to sacrifice 40% of their profits, right? To cut somebody off because of the fact that they're trying <laughs> to teach a lesson. How and that's way. crazy because I want to get in touch. That in itself, bro, because everybody talks not right. Everybody talked about Kanye losing that money from the Adidas. But what about Adidas? Adidas. The money Adidas, Adidas is going to lose. lose from that. Because there's no way in hell, I'm going to tell you just right now, they said they're going to put back out. Who cuts the off Yeezy. their cash cow? Hold on, hold on. But they said they're going to put back out the Yeezys without the Yeezy name. <laughs> Now listen, those are one of those. Those are fake Yeezys. Those and if are you wear, and if you wear those <coughs> fake ass Yeezys, wait a minute. But this is what I want to say to you. It's not even if you, if you wear it. Our culture would never even. It's not even about Kanye at that point. They would never even put them shits on. Those are one of those. Like nobody's never gonna do that. Those like, are one of those. So the, you know, like the cut your face. Uh, the, what Yo, the, what's that saying? The how about this? And I'm gonna say this now. Cut right, your face. But not only that, I'm gonna say this right now. The Adidas designs without the Yeezy are like U.S. Polo Association. Say shit. I, that's what I told somebody today. Straight up. It's like chaps. <laughs> it's like chaps. And you know what chaps stand for? Can't have a polo shirt. So that's yo, that it's is. so crazy. I was telling somebody that today. that's what I was talking about today. I said, yo, listen, nobody's buying U.S. Polo. And the crazy shit is the same shirt. Yeah. Material-wise, same shirt. Some of the material is even better. And, but, and, and they licensed that from Ralph <laughs> Yo, and nobody's Just like buying, cops. Nobody's buying that. Nobody's going to wear that. Yeah. So to me, it's like, yo, how can you say the, say the expression again? Cut your nose off to spite your face. Cut your nose off to spite your face. Like, the audacity. You say the audacity of a Kyrie or Kanye, <laughs> but 
I don't know. There go Monty, Monty being Monty, Monty again. But how the audacity that you would even do that to yourself? Hold on, I see those Cheetos are kicking in. Smoke weed every day. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I thought that was crazy. I also thought some of the athletes that jumped out the window, like LeBron James, right. I, was, I, was, I, was, I was highly disappointed because LeBron James, I'm a big LeBron James fan, right? And I think LeBron James, a lot of times, always uh, is sometimes, most of the time in the right when he comes out and stand up for, for black, for the black people. He did it with Trayvon Martin. He did it with um, Colin Kaepernick. He, you know, I, I, I fuck with LeBron. Hopefully, maybe it's a mistake or I don't know, but at the same time, he didn't have to say nothing. Shut up, nothing. He could have kept his mouth shut. He could have said, I don't have an opinion. <laughs> I don't have an opinion. He could keep... have said, this is a colleague of mine. He's going through whatever he's going through. I'm not saying I agree with what he did, but I don't have an opinion. opinion. It's that simple. And left it there. You know, Shaq calling him an idiot, and I like Shaq. I think Shaq is the... F I expect that I've from always Char liked Shaq, too. I, that, I expect that, that from Charles Barkley. The, like, that I didn't expect that from a, Shaq. That made me lose a lot of yeah, like, like, respect for Shaq, man. I hear you, but you could just say you could you you don't got to say nothing at all. That's the thing. The not neutrality is saying that you're on someone is no, you're I, on the I, side. And I hear you, and I, I hear you, but we don't got listen. It was so there's so many people that didn't talk on the other side of this. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And they didn't have to say nothing. They didn't say nothing. They chose not to say nothing. Whether they agreed, what and, they thought Kyrie was anti-Semitic or not. Jews, some Jews didn't even care. And they didn't I'll say, say anything. I but think, they just stood with their people and their leaders. So. That was my problem. A lot of people did, I want to say this though, a lot of people did backstep. I see a lot of people come back out. LeBron, LeBron came, he came back out and said, yo, Kyrie should be playing basketball. Stephen A. Smith. Stephen A. Smith came out and said it. Jay Will, I was really disappointed in Jay Will because Jay Will, even through the pandemic, all the things Kyrie do, he always seemed to have Kyrie back. And to me, I watched ESPN. To me, when Jay Will came out that morning, and when ape shit on Kyrie, that's when everything start to fall. But I, but I, but, I but he also came back and. But I want to say that because the list of demands, we got to get into that. The mm -hmm. list of demands, the six demands it's they extreme. Wanted, it's extreme. It was fucking retarded. It's extreme. It's extreme. Once again, it's nothing but a lynching in broad day. That's that's what it pretty much is. But I do want to say what we have to understand: the difference between this situation and the situation with is that with the the opposition was America. In this case, it's the gatekeepers, bro. It's the gatekeepers that control sports, that control media, that control television. There's a huge difference. Going against politics, going against uh, 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 these, these politicians, and going against these gatekeepers who are ruthless and can literally shut you out, it's a totally different fight, man. Um, and I do want to say that with us, no war is convenient. None. There is no... There is no being comfortable in war. And sometimes there are sacrifices that have to be made. And I'm all for preparation. But the longer we wait is the longer that the opposing side has to put us at an even bigger disadvantage. Well, well this is what I want to say, too. I watched, and you know, it's so funny. I didn't really watch the, I didn't know when Kyrie did the first address and he was like, um, he wasn't anti-Semitic and nothing like that. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that was a longer video. Mm -hmm. Like I just saw the clip and I took the clip. And yeah, was of like, course, it's always a right? sound bite. It's a sound bite. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know he broke it down, why he said what he said, what he was doing when he did it. You know what I'm saying? And said, look, man, I come from a melting pot from a group of people. I don't, I don't, I don't have any racism in me. I, I come from all kind of walks of life. I just anybody knows. We have me, the know. least amount of hate, right, us, man. Right. I, I, I'm not, I'm, I don't even live that way. We're not a hateful I people. Only, I know, I'm just saying I know where I come from. Unless it's towards ourselves. Yeah, he said, he said, he said, um, he, he know where he, he just wanted to know where he came from. And, you know, he knows that he's from, he's a Hebrew and he was breaking it all down. But I never even seen that part of the video. And it's crazy that we, we live in a world. My point is, my bigger point is we live in a world of sound bites because what Kyrie did was basically put out something that he thought that he agreed with or looked at it and said, oh, I identify with this. And they took a whole video and said, yo, he identified with the whole thing. But this is what the media does, though. And that's crazy, because when you think about it, you can't, you, sometimes we got to look at the picture from the whole, that's the how whole they, view. That's how they paint you a narrative. You can't take one, one thing a person says and not listen to the whole thing and go, 
and, and, and establish opinion. Because I think if more people heard the whole soundbite, how could you really be, you couldn't really be upset with him. Like, you, if, when he explains you know, himself. You know, you know what's so crazy? Like you said, with the soundbite, it's the narrative that's constantly being pushed out there. That's how they control the narrative. You know, they never let people see everything as a whole. What they do, it's just like editing. They take a piece and they draw the picture to the people that they want the people to see. And the people eat it up, man. The people well, eat it up. What I will say is, you know, I hope this is a, <clears throat> a turning point, a life lesson, and people start to wake up on both sides or either sides. Um, sometimes I feel like there's a bigger agenda at hand. Sometimes. I, and I don't know who, who, who's, who playing the hand all the time, right? But I will say we need to tighten up just as, as black and brown people. Um, we need to figure out that even with the Jewish people, we all been through a great deal of hardship, hardship in struggle. our life, struggle. We all been through, they've been through a Holocaust. We've been through slavery. We have more in common than we probably don't, that we not don't have, don't have in common. But you know what I'm saying? I hope we could work, work through this and start figuring out ways and black people, we got to wake up and start having more ownership and understand our power, understand our buying power, understand that we all culture, we make things hot, and we gotta stop just making things hot, but we gotta be owners of the things that we make hot. We gotta change our mindset on what we give our dollars to and how we give our dollars to it. As far as forming an alliance with any other group of people, I think that that's great for later on down the line. But I think no one's going to want to align with us until we get our shit straight, until we fix our shit in our backyard. So I think the number one thing that we need to focus on, man, is getting us right, man. And I know we're tired of hearing this thing about unity, 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 unifying, unifying. But I think the reason that this is constantly resurfacing, because that is the road to us bringing an end to, to, to what we've been suffering and having to deal with, man, for, for, for hundreds of years. You know, it's so funny because we're looking to our oppressor to stop the oppression when the key to it being stopped is in our hands. The second that we wake up and we come to understand that the only human hands that can stop us are our own. God is on our side. We are God's people. That's the second everything changes, man. We need to stop looking to everyone else to bring the change, bro. Like... That it's 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 in our hands. It's in our hands. And that's all I want to say. So yo, I was listening to uh, I don't know if you heard it yet. Drake and Twenty One Savage new joint. Nah, I ain't heard it yet. Yo, my dude. I, I yo, listen, man. I knew Drake was nice. We mean like a nice guy. <laughs> nah, I think I think I think Drake, I think Drake is nice as yo, hell, bro. He, Always Drake lyrically. is a problem, B. Yeah. It, 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 I, I don't want to really get too much to it. So to you, listen to it. And then we could probably couple, uh, you know, quote a couple of lines on here. But if nobody listened to that album yet. Go listen to it. Twenty One, I enjoyed him, but I think Drake was so, you so nice. Him. No, but listen, I think Drake was so nice. Like I like Twenty One Savage, but Drake just out rapped him to everything, on everything to me on the album. Twenty One did what he was supposed to do. I do like the solo track with Twenty One. He rhymed over like an East Coast type beat, and I, I like how he approached the record. So that was dope, but. Drake is the, Drake is a problem. I knew he was a problem with the you know the melodicness and singing, but <laughs> the bars on this shit is like he a battle rapper that know how to make records. Like it's just it's, it's retarded. So check it out. When I gotta check time. it out. I'm gonna check it out this week. I'm gonna check it out when you get a chance. Um, there's something else I wanted to holler at you about. Let me see real quick though. There was one more. Y'all guys want to hear another poem? A poem. <laughs> story. Story time. I got a story. I got a crazy story. No, not at all. You don't more like don't like the, don't talk, let let us in this life. Big up, big up uh, we're, we're, uh, to Nick Cannon real quick. We see he got his twelfth baby. How many babies this nigga gonna pop out? Listen, if that's what he want to do, I think uh, he definitely making it. Nick, 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 Nick doing it. Is he doing the way he taking the power with his own hand? <laughs> Nick Cannon must. I don't know. He must have the formula for finding all the women that don't cause stress. Well, <laughs> kids. Yeah, nobody going for child support or nothing like this that. Is what I'm oh, saying. he got it all set up like he, he worked has, out a like a contract or something. Like, what he, he do? He has a great relationship with his. He's with a the bad woman too, his children. You know what I mean? That's and and that's a beautiful thing. You know, but my, my only thing is because I know 
with me, my, my concern is always, damn, my child doesn't wake up to me and go to sleep to me every single day. You know, that, that'd be my biggest concern. But I mean, if, if he has a way, if he has a way, if he has a way of balancing it all out, more power to him, man. All right, all right, all right, all right. Well, listen, man. That concludes this week of Brooklyn Boys Radio. Shout out to the Woods, this Zach. Tico! What up? Shout out to my guy, Monty. Yeah, hi, Yo. Monty. Monty Yo. is high Yo. as hell today. <laughs> Every, yeah, he's high as hell. He's either outside I, I take getting that high. From my arthritis knee. Okay, cool. All right, don't do that to me. You, oh, know, it's legal now. you know the man suffers from that stuff and... I don't care. He's you need high. some. You need some sensitivity. When you see the camera shaking and shit, that's because Monty hot. <laughs> Monty is hot. You know what I mean? Shout out to Woodstack though once again. But yo, thank you for tuning in for another week, man. We'll be back. We'll be back with more news and more pop culture. Yes, sir. Appreciate y'all. Brooklyn out.